In the last video, we introduced generating functions, and we specifically covered the generating function e to the x. The e to the x example is very specific. We have a rather odd sequence, and the only reason we know it's generating function is because we happen to know the Taylor series for e to the x. Our goal now is to gather some tools to build the generating function of a particular given sequence. Let's see what the generating functions are for some very simple sequences. The simplest of all being 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. What does the generating series look like? Well, it's simply 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus and so on. Now, can we find a closed formula for this power series? Well, yes. This particular series is really just a geometric series with common ratio x. So if we use our multiply, shift, and subtract technique, we, uh, we learned that in a previous video, we can, we can see that if we have s equals this, and we look at s times x, that's just x, well, actually, let me write it this way, 0 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and so on. That's because we're, again, multiplying and shifting. And we, sub we take s and we subtract s times x, this whole thing, we're subtracting each term here. This is just, on the right side, one. One minus zero is one. One x minus one x is zero. x squared minus x squared is zero. x cubed minus x cubed is zero, and so forth. So on the right side, we just have one, and on the left side, we have one minus x times s. And so that means that s is one over one minus x. And so this thing right here, this, um, the series is just 1 over 1 minus x. You might remember from calculus that this is only true on the interval of convergence for the power series in the case when the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1. That is true for us, but we don't care. <laughs> We're never going to plug anything in for x. So as long as there is some value of x for which the generating function and generating series agree, we're happy. And in this case, we're happy. Hey everyone, real quick, I just want to mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. All right, let's use this basic generating function to find generating functions for more sequences. What if we replace x by negative x? Well, we would get 1 over 1 plus x equals 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and so on. Which, by the way, generates the sequence 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and so on. If we replace x by 3x, we would get 1 over... Here, let me make that a little better. And let me give myself a little bit more room here. We get 1 over 1 minus 3x, which would be 1 plus 3x plus 9x squared plus 27x cubed, and so on. And again, all we're doing is we're plugging in 3x into that original generating series. All right, this sequence, or this series, generates the sequence 1, 3, 9, 27, and so forth. 
By replacing x with, uh, in one over one minus x, we can get generating functions for a variety of sequences, but not all. For example, you cannot plug in anything for x to get the generating function two, 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 two and so forth. However, we are not lost yet. Notice that each term of two, 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 two is the result of multiplying the terms one, 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 one by the constant two. So multiply the generating function by two as well. If you remember, this generating function was one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth. We can multiply all the terms by two to show that two divided by one minus x is two plus two x plus two x squared plus two x cubed and so forth. So we can multiply that fraction one over one minus x by two and we'll multiply all the terms by two as well to give the, uh, that this generates the sequence two, 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 two. And so I wanna mention before I move on, we showed that one over one minus three x was one, three, nine, 27, and so forth. But how would we find the generating function for the sequence, let's see, maybe three, nine, 27, 81, and so forth? Well, we know that this sequence is the result of multiplying each term from this sequence by three. Since we have the generating function for this sequence here, we can say that this sequence is generated by the function three divided by one minus three x, or three times that function. So this generates three, nine, 27, and 81. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.